What's up guys, Chris here. Today I'm starting a brand new segment called The Talk. Now The Talk is going to be tackling some of the social issues that have sort of piqued my interest, got me, got me interested in discussing it with more people. And I want to start conversations um, with the general community, and YouTube is a great platform to do this with, about some of the big issues that are really affecting uh, Australia and the world today. For episodes I hope to have guests on, so there'll be other people with me and we can have a proper conversation. But for now, we're going to open up this discussion, the first, the talk, the first talk with pill testing. Pill testing in Australia is a very, very controversial and hot topic at the moment and I think it's very important to put out as many opinions as possible so our politicians and policy makers can get a broader and better picture of what the Australian public actually think. Now, pill testing is a really, really simple concept. It's basically some medically trained staff and or scientists that rock up to music festivals, gigs, uh, big community events, usually attended by a lot of young people, and they're able to test the illicit drugs that these people are intending on consuming whilst at the event, and they can tell them what's in it, and then they can make the conscious decision whether or not they want to throw their drugs away, or if they want to still take them and consume them at that festival. On the surface, for me personally, I think this sounds like a really good idea, but I want to pull it apart and I want to sort of give you both sides of the argument uh, and see if you can't get a clearer picture for yourself. But as we all know, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. So if you have both sets of facts, you might be able to make up your own mind. Uh, I want you to let me know in the comments below what you think. Give me some of your reasoning, your logics. I'll do my best to write back to as many as I can. The latest controversy is because a young woman aged just 19 years old died at a Queensland festival called FOMO over the weekend uh, from taking an unknown illicit substance. And this is the sixth death of the similar type of a drug overdose at a music festival since November, which is outrageous. You know, that's more than one a month. Uh, and we should be doing better than this, I personally feel. And pill testing is a way that we can help safeguard the young people in our community who wish to take drugs. Now, we have to talk about this because this is the key point, I feel, is that young people are going to take drugs. The Queensland Premier has come out after this latest death and basically said that there will not be any pill testing at concerts across Queensland. She's going to take a stance because there isn't a general consensus among the various communities involved, the health professionals, the general public and politicians. Uh, her basic ideology is this, that it's going to open up uh, the ability for people to go and take more drugs and feel that they are actually safe. So the idea is I go out and I buy a couple of ecstasy pills, I take them to a concert and the people in the big white tent that keep all my details completely anonymous test my pills and say yes there's pretty much nothing but MDMA in there, there's no rat poison and it's likely not going to melt your veins. Well, then I go out to the concert and I could take my drugs and feel safe. That's her concept behind it and she thinks that because I feel safe, it's going to invite more people to do drugs and more people to uh, partake in the illicit drug trade. But I think we have to look at this from all angles. I kind of understand her point of view. I understand that if, you, if the government, someone in authority, anyone in authority, says that something is safe, then it kind of gives you a green light to go ahead and do it. It's kind of like getting your driver's license. You could be a fantastic driver without your driver's license, but having that piece of plastic in your hand gives you the legal right to do it, and you feel safer for it and a few other things. So it's the same sort of concept. But to fully appreciate this, we have to look at some statistics, I think. And we all love statistics. They kind of help quantify things, don't they? So let's rattle some of them off from the Australian Bureau of Statistics from 2016, which is just over two years ago now. The first one is that in 2016, 1,808 people lost their lives due to drug taking. So this covers everything. This isn't just illicit drugs. This isn't just cocaine and heroin and ecstasy and, and all those ones that you would buy from some shady Colombian dude down the road, but it also includes pharmaceuticals. And it also takes into account long-term drug abuse. And this is where it gets complicated and very interesting. The most likely demographic to be affected by drug overdose and death were middle-aged men, usually from opioids and benzodiazepines. So things like Valium and Xanax, um, Oxycodone and Codeine are the drugs that were killing 
middle-aged men the most. They made up the highest demographic, and it works out to be roughly 7.6 people per 100,000 as the population of Australia died in 2016 because of drugs. Now, the interesting thing there is that the highest percentage of drug deaths came from prescription medications, med medicine designed for people who are in chronic pain, who have just come out of surgery, uh, and, and generally prescribed by doctors that are perceived to be safe. So this is sort of links back to that first thing that the Prime Minister said that making people feel safe is likely going to cause more people to try them. But we have a problem. We have almost an epidemic when it comes to drugs or people abusing prescription painkillers and, and benzodiazepines. And that is exactly why recently Australia has introduced laws to combat uh, the abuse of codeine. We've now got to get a prescription for them. And we'll touch on this in a bit about the informational side of why these pill tests intents are so important but for now you just got to understand that drug overdoses are mostly killing middle-aged males and they're doing it with prescription drugs when we look at the illicit drug side, most people will automatically jump to one thing, which is methamphetamine. That, it's a very nasty drug and it's destroying a lot of lives, yet it doesn't actually have overly much impact on the drug deaths. It accounts for 1.6 people per 100,000 deaths in Australia, which is statistically a rise up from the 1999 survey that they did some 15, 16 years earlier, which was only 0.4, but that's probably because of the ready availability of this drug and it's sort of insertion into society, a greater society. And one of the really, really interesting things that I found from the ABS study was that the deaths over time, most Australians will live to be over 80 years of age. I think it was 80.4 years of age as a whole. But long-term chronic drug abuse actually accounts for about a 30-year life reduction. 50% of people who take drugs regularly will die before the age of 44, and 90% will die before the age of 64. And that's, that's, that's ridiculous. But that's not what we're talking about because often we get this sort of long-term drug abuse and overall drug deaths brought in to the space of illicit drugs and therefore pill testing. And that's not what we're talking about. We've got to separate them. Most deaths in Australia from drugs are from prescription painkillers. It's important to note one more thing about these drug deaths, and that is that not all of these are through abuse. Some of them are accidents. Actually, quite a high percentage of the drug deaths, the 1,808 people who died, were due to accidents accidental overdose. People who might have been on chemotherapy and took slightly too much morphine, people who had a Valium and then maybe a Xanax or something later on and it didn't agree with them and they overdosed on these drugs. So being taking all of that into account, I think you've got a better idea about what sort of drug taking and deaths are happening in Australia and now we can relate it back to pill testing. So the Premier's point in Queensland is that she doesn't want to incite people to go out and take take more illicit drugs, which I think is a logical fear, but it's not based in fact. So the ABS has already told us that most people who are dying of drug overdoses and poisonings and things like that are middle-aged males. They have the highest demographic of taking drugs and they have the highest demographic of overdosing on them. So when we look at these places that are going to have pill testing booths, uh, we're not really in the same demographic. We're in young, like sort of late teenage, early 20s, uh, and a lot of the deaths recently have been women as well. So what could we do? What's why, why are these people overdosing? Especially the, the most recent one on an unknown substance. And this is what I was talking about earlier, how we're going to touch on education. I think it's so important. When you get a prescription for Oxycontin, uh, Valium, Xanax, anything like that, you get a little leaflet in there and it gives you a big list of possible side effects. Some of them were really benign, you might feel a bit dizzy, you might feel a bit sleepy, and usually when that happens you just go to bed, sleep it off, and you're all good. Uh, but ecstasy tablets don't really come with these leaflets. They come with sort of a guess that you're probably going to feel pretty good for a while, and then tomorrow are you going to feel really hung over? That's kind of just what happens when you take ecstasy. So these pill testing booths are essentially working like those leaflets that come within those um, boxes of Xanax and Valium. 
And this education side is really important because we're dealing with young people. We're dealing with people who are pushing the boundaries of what is possible in their lives. And we've all done it to a certain extent. Every single one of us has tried to figure out exactly what we can do. Some of us have drunk too much. And that's now why when we have Susan over for a glass of wine, when the kids have gone to bed and we're enjoying ourselves, we only have one or two because we don't want to wake up feeling the day terrible and we don't want to get so drunk that we vomit or anything stupid like that. But we learned that limit because one night we had Susan over and we drank three bottles of wine and she had to hold your hair out of the toilet while you were chucking your gut. Up. Some people will do it with alcohol, some people will do it with cigarettes, some people will do it with drugs, some people will do it with fast cars. And that's exactly why we have other programs in those other things other than the illicit drug side of it that deal with it. We have open speed days. You can take your car down to a racetrack and you can flog it in a controlled environment that have safety marshals, they have medical personnel there, they have everything ready in the event that something goes wrong and they educate those drivers. Drivers. They teach them how to get better. Smoking, we have campaigns all over TV, all over the packaging, all over, absolutely everywhere. You can't look anywhere nowadays without seeing cigarette warning labels about exactly what is in it and what it's going to do to your body. And what's happened? It's decreased. Now, if we look at the illicit drugs, the closest we get to pill testing is injecting rooms. So we have heroin injecting rooms. And by the same logic, if you thought that doing pill testing was going to increase the um, level of drug use in young adults because they perceive it to be safer, well then the injecting rooms were caused by the same by the same logic. They were conceived with the idea that there's going to be less used needles out in the community, the people who are actually using heroin are going to have uh, clean needles that aren't going to spread diseases, and they're going to have sort of a safe place to inject and, and take this drug where they can get help if they do need it. Now, we haven't seen a massive rise in heroin use. In fact, it's quite low. It's actually gone down. Like, when they're not using as much heroin, and the people that are, are safer for it. So it goes to the same standard as pill testing. If I took my pills into a tent and the doctor said, you know what is in this? And I say, no. And he goes, well, you've got MDMA and they've cut it because the Australian government's doing a fantastic job at quashing the supply of the precursors that are need to make things like ecstasy. So they cut it with other things. It could be something as benign as baby powder. So you might have MDMA and baby powder. So you're not going to get as potent of a pill, but you're still going to get an ecstasy hit. And and you'll think it's all right. But then there are some other ones that aren't, they're looking for a quick buck. You've got to remember that drug dealers and drug manufacturers, they're not they are not just idiots in bathtubs, not all of them anyway. Some of them are quite professional. And like in the consumer market, if you make a product that is good, your people, your customers are going to come back and get more. And that's why you would cut it with something like a Valium. Say you've got a, an excess supply of Valium because prescriptions for it are super easy to get, and then you can cut your ecstasy pills with Valium. You've got two drugs that interact together and hey presto, you get a nice high. Now, some of the unscrupulous ones, some of the ones that just want to make a quick buck, they've got enough precursor to make maybe a thousand pills and they've got to cut it with something else. They could cut it with anything, anything that's at hand and that's where the issue comes in. Things like rat poison. Rat poison costs like a dollar a box. I go down and pick it up and you wouldn't know the difference when you take one tiny ecstasy pill. But as we all know, rat poison might be made from something like warfarin, which is a commercial blood thinner, and that might disagree with some people who are already on blood thinners, or, or it might really, really mess you up because there are other chemicals in it, and you don't know that. So when they test these pills and they tell you there's warfarin in this, you can look at it and go, what's warfarin? And he goes, it's a blood thinner, it kills rats. And you'll go, no thanks, I'm out. I don't want that, and discard it. So when I step back and I logically look at what they're asking to do, they're asking to put pill testing sites on all of these concerts and it will save dozens of lives a year, dozens and dozens. And it will prevent young people from making a mistake that they can't come back from. We've all probably had a small bingle in our car. Maybe not because we were doing something stupid, but it would have taught ourselves a lesson if we reversed into a bin or we swung around too hard and scraped the car next to us. You know, these little accidents teach us a life lesson. Uh, we drink too much with Susan and we vomit so we don't drink as much again. It's a bit harder when you're messing with your brain chemistry to the point where it could kill you.
So by giving these people the chance to get the leaflet with their ecstasy pill, we're helping them avoid a fatal mistake that they can't come back from. I think it should be legalized. It should be legalized countrywide. Um, and the biggest issue I have with the Australian government in general is their slowness to embrace things that the public already know to be of benefit. Things like gay marriage. Why did we spend $120 million on a postal vote? Why did we do that when the rest of the world is legalizing it? Why have we still not even looked at making medical marijuana something that's easily accessible? There are ways of producing medical marijuana that do not give you any high effects and they just work as a really good anti-nausea tablet and they work really good as a painkiller better than and safer than things like oxycodone which are killing people like we talked at the start here so pill testing i feel will come in it's going to happen but the australian government's going to drag their behind on it because they don't understand the culture they don't understand what's actually happening out in the public and it's up to people like us to talk to them about it so they do understand so what's your opinion Pill testing. Should it be legalized? Should it be something that's easily accessible for everyone? Maybe even if you went to your doctor's office to get something like this tested. So instead of our young people making mistakes that they can't come back from, that kill them, we could give them the opportunity to make the right decision. And that's what it's about. It's about informing people. It's not about supporting the use of illicit drugs. It's about supporting logic. It's about supporting the ability for people to make an informed decision as opposed to an irrational decision that could cost them their lives. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to hear your opinion. Thank you so much for watching. Peace and I'm out.